Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 1, Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number 16 and we're just going to have a quick introduction to enzymes. The specifics around enzyme function is a practical activity that you need to do in order to model the action of enzymes. And so we want to unpack that, we want to have a good look at how um, our model or how our experiment demonstrates how enzymes function uh, but in order to do that you'll have to do that as a practical activity so this video is really designed just as an introduction to give you a bit of an idea about what enzymes are and how they function so the important thing that we need to look at first of all is that enzymes are what we call biological catalysts now catalysts are simply designed to lower what we call the activation energy required for a reaction to happen so every reaction requires a certain amount of energy in order for those um, uh, reactant molecules to start reacting in order to form the product. Enzymes are a particular group of proteins, in fact, that are present in cells which are able to catalyze different chemical reactions within the cell. Enzymes are able to control the rate of a very large number of metabolic reactions and in fact they can be involved at different stages in part of a, a, a larger process like respiration or photosynthesis. If we think about it from a chemical perspective, catalysts are simply chemical substances that, ch that are able to change the rate of a chemical reaction, but they themselves are not changed. So they don't become part of the reactants, nor the products uh, of this reaction. Or I guess if you want to think of it in a different way, they're both uh, reactant and product, and therefore they can be cancelled out. However, their presence is very important to the particular chemical reaction that they're involved with. And this means that if we can um, recover them at the end of a reaction, then they can be reused. And that's a very important part of enzyme function. There's a couple of terms, as there always is with biology, that are important to start to get to grips with at the moment. The enzyme is the actual biological catalyst, and as we've said, it's a protein. The substrate would be the equivalent in chemical terms of the reactant. Now sometimes there is one reactant and sometimes there are multiple reactants. And what we'll look at is the fact that um, different types of metabolic reactions are either designed to take a large molecule and split it into smaller particles or take smaller molecules and put them together to make larger molecules. In both situations, the reactant or multiple reactants would be regarded as the substrate upon which the enzyme acts. As the substrate binds to the enzyme, we get an enzyme substrate complex. So these things will sort of stick together for a little while and then um, the enzyme will release the product of that reaction and that will be either one more complex substance or a couple of more simpler substances. The important thing about enzymes is they have a particular shape and that particular shape helps them to catalyze different types of reactions. And the types of reactions that enzymes are involved with are either synthesis reactions, synthesis reactions, which are called anabolic reactions. And the easiest way to think about that is um, a lot of uh, problems were created some years ago with the use of anabolic steroids. And anabolic steroids were basically designed to build muscle mass artificially or, or quicker than um, an athlete could do so just under normal um, exercise or training regimes. And this was a big problem. Um, and so that's our, our way of kind of remembering that anabolic reactions are synthesis, they're build up. Uh, reactions. So they're, they're actually creating new and usually longer, bigger molecules um, in the process of metabolism. The reverse of them is catabolic reactions, and these are breakdown or decomposition reactions. So in anabolic reactions, we build up different compounds. Uh, in catabolic reactions, we break down compounds. And enzymes are involved in both um, anabolic and catabolic reactions. So what we have to do then is we have to start to get a bit of an understanding of why enzymes are so specific um, to different types of reactions and how they function. And one of the most important characteristics is the fact that they have these quite complex three-dimensional structures. They are long chains of amino acids, as all proteins are, but the difference with these ones is they roll and fold and they change their shape depending on different bonds that occur. 
the actual understanding of this requires um, a little bit of chemistry, which is probably not something we need to worry about just now, but something we may look at a little bit later down the track. The important thing is that there's certain shapes that the enzymes have that make them ideally suited to bonding with certain types of chemicals and usually only those ones. In fact, enzymes can be so specific that if you don't produce the right enzyme, you may have a, a body function that uh, doesn't occur the way that it should. Uh, and again, we'll have a look at that, uh, some examples uh, in some later videos. The most important thing, I guess, to look at is the specificity of enzymes, and that is that they, despite their, their quite complex shapes, their long chain of um, uh, peptide bonds, the fact is that they have usually a particular shape that is linked to their substrate. So this whole idea of an enzyme substrate complex is critically important um, because how the substrate bonds to the enzyme um, can tell us something about the specificity of that enzyme. The important thing is that when the um, substrate is coming towards the enzyme that there is actually a place for it to fit, a nice little snug fit for the enzyme to bond to the substrate. Now there's two different um, models for how this occurs and I'll and I'll give you a quick look at both of those as well as what's the current preferred model. Um, but the important um, sequence here is that the substrate comes towards the enzyme. Um, when they bind together they form an enzyme substrate complex. Then the chemical reaction occurs which say for this one might be um, uh, breaking down, so a catabolic reaction, which is breaking one substance into two and then therefore releasing those two as products um, from the breakdown of that active site. So this is kind of a bit of an overview. It's a really important way of trying to think about how enzymes function because the way that the molecules are structured is going to affect how they interact with one another. So we've, we've kind of given ourselves two different models to explain how this happens. Of course, remember, this is, these are chemical compounds, so they're very difficult for us to see. We're getting closer and closer with our, our uh, microscopes, electron microscopes, to seeing exactly how chemicals are shaped. Uh, and there's a few different devices that we have now to give us a bit more information about this. But we still have a model that we use to help us explain how enzymes function. In fact, we have two. The first of these is called the lock and key model. And as you would expect, this is about having a substrate which perfectly matches the spaces in the enzyme. So it fits together like a key in a lock. You can't just put any key in the lock. You have to have the right one or it won't, fit, it won't function, it won't open. So the lock and key is very much about the substrate and the enzyme coming together at the active site with a perfect fit. That model um, was used very successfully to explain things like the specificity of enzymes. Enzymes do catalyze particular reactions and a lock and key mechanism is a really good explanation for that because it means if it's not right, if it doesn't fit perfectly, it won't work. But we now have a more favored model, which is called the induced fit model. Now what this means is that the, the, the lock and key has disappeared a little bit because the key that's going in doesn't have to be perfect. It should be roughly correct, but that the enzyme and the substrate, when they bind together, are going to just shuffle around a little bit to make that fit a perfect fit. So you will still have in the enzyme substrate complex a, a perfect fit between the substrate and the enzyme. It's just that it doesn't have to be like a key, like a hard structure that won't change. These are molecules, these are bonds within molecules, and they can shuffle around just a little bit to create a perfect fit. So you can see here, when we look at the substrate and the enzyme, we don't have perfect alignment, but once the complex is formed, then we do have perfect alignment between the substrate and the complex, and then uh, a substrate and the enzyme, and then the reaction can proceed. So when you're talking about it, it's probably useful for you to understand the lock and key model, but we do talk now about the induced fit model of enzyme function. What is it that actually affects enzymes? There's a couple of environmental factors that actually affect enzyme function, but I think we'll save them for another video. Thanks for watching.